Hello students, welcome to the 41st lecture of Physical Pharmaceutics 1 BP302T. I am Dr. Sushma Verma, Associate Professor in the Department of Pharmaceutics, Pharmacy Institute, NIT Greater Noida. In today's lecture, we will be starting with our fifth unit of Physical Pharmaceutics 1. It is pertaining to buffer systems, PN of buffer systems and various uh, physico-chemical properties like pH and buffer system that are to be taken care of while uh, formulating various dosage forms, right. So, we will be starting with first what is pH. So, the concept of pH was given by a Danish chemist Soren Peder Lorenz Sorensen and according to him pH is equal to the reciprocal of log of hydronium ion concentration, right. And if we rearrange this equation, it becomes log 1 minus log of hydronium ion concentration, right. So, you know the value of log 1 is 0, right. And the equation is written as such. So, pH is equal to minus log of hydronium ion concentration, right. And it is a scale of measuring the uh, acidity and alkalinity, right. And it is the negative logarithm of activity of hydronium ion concentration. And pH in P stands for this minus log, right and H stands for this hydronium ion concentration, right. So, A stands here for activity of hydronium ion, right. This term is equal to this hydron activity of hydronium ion is equal to concentration of hydronium ion into the rational activity coefficient rational activity coefficient, right. So, the concentration here is given in moles per liter or it is the molarity of the solution, right. So, the concentration here is given in moles per liter and uh, this activity of hydronium ion is concentration of hydronium ion into uh, rational activity coefficient. This is for concentrated solution, right. In case of dilute solution, we can ignore this term, right. So, this term is ignored in case of dilute solutions and pH uh, stands for uh, the your this activity of hydronium ion stands for the concentration of hydronium ion for dilute solutions, right. For dilute solution, it is taken to be concentration of hydronium ion and this rational activity coefficient is uh, removed, right. So, next is the Sorensen pH scale. So, depending upon different pH values, this scale was designed and right, uh, the concentration of the solution here is uh, taken in moles per liter, moles per liter or it is the molarity, right. So, concentration term, we have different concentration terms, normality, molality and molar molarity. So, here we have taken up the concentration term as molarity and here you find uh, the at the start of the scale at PS0, the concentration of the hydrogen ion is 10 raise to power 0 or is equal to 1. So, here the acidity will be maximum, right. And as we move towards right and reach the end, we find that the concentration of the hydronium ion is minus 14, right. So, here the alkalinity is maximum and the pH here is 14. Though the scale runs from pH 0 to pH 14 and it starts from hydrogen ion concentration of 1 and ends up at the hydrogen ion concentration of 14 and here the pH of the solution is alkaline and in the starting the pH of the solution is acidic, right. So, in the center at 7 
we see that the hydrogen ion concentration is equal to hydroxyl ion concentration and we find that the pH is neutral here. right? So, and if we move towards uh, left from this neutral site, we see that the acidity is increasing and as we move towards right, we see that the alkalinity of the solution or whichever solution we have taken is increasing. Right. So, next uh, I like to give you the brief definition of buffers or I like to just introduce buffers. So, buff, uh, what are buffers? So, buffers are a mixture of weak acid and one of its salt or it can be a weak base and one of its salt. So, buffer can be of two types either it can be of weak acid plus its salt right, and a weak base plus its salt and so the characteristic of an ideal buffer is that it has a pKa equal to the particular pH required. Right. So, the ideal buffer is that which have a pKa equal to the pH desired for which it is made and buffers are solutions of compounds of mixtures and they have a property to resist the change in pH upon the addition of alkali or acid. So, if you add an alkali or a acid to a buffer solution, so they resist a change in pH. So, this is the main characteristics of buffer. Next, we will like to take up the buffer action. So, since we have two types of buffer solutions, so buffer action uh, will be different for both of them. So, first we will take up the case of mixture of weak acid and its salt, right. We have taken up the example of acetic acid and its salt sodium acetate, right. So, the mixture consists of acetic acid, right and the acetic acid will give acetate ions right and hydrogen ion but since it is a uh, dilute acid so it will not dissociate much and the salt that we have taken acetate sodium acetate it will dissociate into acetate ions and sodium ions Right. So, if we are having a mixture of acetic acid and sodium acetate, we find that we have molecules of acetic acid right, and acetate ions and sodium ions and see what happens if a strong acid is added to it. If strong acid is added to it, we get hydrogen ions and these hydrogen ions from the strong acid will react with the acetate ions to give acetic acid again right. So, this acetic acid was initially present right. So, uh, it will contribute to that only and the pH will not change right and in the case of a strong base and if a strong base is added to a buffer solution what will happen we will get this hydroxyl ions from the strong base and this will react with the molecules of acetic acid to give acetate ions and hydrogen uh, no sorry water right it is water. So, we will get acetate ions. So, again uh, initially we had acetate ions. So, the pH will not rise again. So, the uh, buffer action will uh, take place in such a way that there is no net change in pH of the solu solution buffer solution. Next is the mixture of weak base and its salt. We have the example of ammonium hydroxide and it is ammonium salt and we have taken up here as ammonium chloride right. So, we have ammonium hydroxide and its salt ammonium chloride and the mixture uh, gives molecules of ammonium hydroxide since it is a weak base. So, its dissociation will be not much right and uh, again we will have this ammonium ions and chloride ions right. So, if a strong acid is added so, this ammonium hydroxide will react with the hydrogen ions to give water and ammonium ions right. These were initially present. So, uh, the pH will not increase and if we have a strong base right, we will uh, get hydroxyl ion and these hydroxyl ion with react with the ammonium ions to give the ammonium hydroxide which is a base right V. So, 
this is the buffer action. Next we take up the factors affecting the pH of buffer solutions, right. First one is temperature, Rod temperature affects the activity coefficient and pK value of a buffer solution, right it affects the activity coefficient and pKa and uh, buffer consisting of a base and its salt, they have a, a greater impact of temperature, right. So, as the temperature increases, so the buffer of uh, boric acid and sodium borate will increase and the solution containing acetic acid and sodium acetate, right. So, an increase in temperature lowers the pH of the basic buffer and an increase in temperature of uh, acidic buffer increases the pH, right. So, it is having an antagonistic effect on the different buffers, right. Next is the salt effects. When a neutral salt is added to a dilute buffer solution, the activity coefficients of the ions are lowered, right. Hence, if a salt is added to acidic buffer, it will lower its pH and if a salt is added to a basic buffer, it will increase its pH. Next is the applications of buffers, right. So, these are very important as far as pharmacy is concerned. So, in pharmaceutical industries to assure the stability and clinical effectiveness of medicines. So, uh, we have a, the example of salicylates, right. So, if they are uh, kept in a particular pH solution, right, they will maintain their activity and if the pH of the solution is uh, changed, so these salicylates will precipitate out to salicylic acid right and there will be a loss in the activity of the salicylates right. We want in the formulation salicylates, but if the pH is changed, so the formulation is altogether changed and the pharmacological action that we are expecting of this drug will not be there right. And next uh, pharmaceutical application is the to improve the patient comfort right. So, we should formulate such formulations so as to comfort the patient, right. So, in our human body, we have different types of physiological fluids and a different pH of that physiological fluids are there, right. So, in case of eye, right, we have different pH, uh, urine, blood, right, or uh, stomach, saliva. So, we have different pH of different physiological flu fluids. So, our formulation should be such so as to comfort the patient. Our formulation should have a pH. If we are uh, putting a formulation into the eye, so it should be uh, very well accommodated by the eye. It should not irritate the eye, right. Should it, it should be in the range of the pH of the eye, right. Similarly, if we are applying it to a abraded skin, right, the formulation can cause uh, some burning sensation to the patient. So, we should maintain the pH to neutral, right. It should be kept uh, near 7, so as to uh, uh, decrease the discomfort to the patient and the patient should not have any burning sensation right and to make longer transportation of medicines possible right. So, if a pH will be optimum, so their formulations will be stable and they can be transported to a longer uh, transportations of medicines is possible and to maintain some drug or medicines in ionized form right. So, the pH is governed by the Henderson Hasselbalch equations and uh, you uh, see that it is if the ionized form of the drug will be there, so it will be solubilized. So, acidic drugs are solubilized in basic solutions and alkaline drugs are solubilized in acidic solutions, right. 
So, if we want the drug in the ionized form, right, we should uh, keep the correct pH for that, right. If the pH will not be correct, so the formulation will not be maintained and it will not be able to give its pharmacological action, right. Next is to maintain the stability of drugs in different aqueous solutions, right. Most of the drugs they get hydrolyzed in aqueous solutions, right. For uh, maintaining that if uh, the drug is in the hydrolyzed solution, it might get degraded, right. For that we have to maintain the pH. So, uh, example is in this case is of vitamins, vitamins they survive only in a small pH range, right. If the pH range is altered from a range of 1.5, there will be a change in their activity. So, vitamins will not be stable in that particular pH, right. So, pH should be maintained so that vitamins can be stable. Next is the to maintain the pH of most of the drugs to neutral. We, uh, we were at the to maintain the pH of most of the drugs to neutral. In this I will take up the example of glass containers. Some glass containers uh, are alkaline in nature that they um, leach sodium ions into the preparation and uh, this they have alkali and they alkali get leached into the solutions, right. And these will make the preparation alkaline and if that is the case, the formulation which is to be maintained at an optimum pH will get degraded, right. So, we have to also focus on the containers in which the drugs are to be stored, right. So, that the uh, formulation can be maintained at its optimum pH right and to keep the correct pH for enzymes in many organisms, right. So, you see that some enzymes for example, pepsin, it is active in a certain range of pH, right. If we change the range of the enzyme, so it will get denatured, right. So, enzymes are also proteins, if it get denatured, so its structure will be lost and its activity also will be lost. So, so as to keep the um, enzymes in many organisms alive, we have to keep the correct pH for the enzyme activity. So, these are some of the applications of buffers in pharmaceutical industry. Next, we take up the applications of buffers in fermentation. It is essential to use buffer solutions to obtain maximum yield, right, in fermentation, right. During fermentation of baking bread of pH of the dove decreases due to release of carbon dioxide, right. When we are baking bread, so release of carbon dioxide takes place and there is a decrease in the pH, right. So, man, uh, to maintain that pH, flour and milk is added, right. So, we have a buffering agent uh, in the form of flour and milk, it acts as a buffering agent and they resist in the pH drop due to the release of the carbon dioxide, right. And uh, some, these are the organic or uh, natural buffers that we have in the form of milk, right and flour and similarly, we can have calcium carbonate also as chemical buffers, right. These can also be used. Next is in food industry, that is also very important, uh, right. To maintain uh, the acidity of the food, right and in order to preserve the flavor and hence the appearance of food some uh, buffers are added, so as to maintain the pH of the food products and to maintain the physical, chemical and microbiological stability of foods, right. And these are buffers are added in the forms of food additives, right. Uh, for example, citrate additives as antioxidants, here yeah, they are capable of reducing the chemical reaction that causes the discoloration of fruits. Right. So, if these buffers are added, they will reduce the chemical reaction that causes discoloration of food, fruits and example is potassium citrate. It can be used to uh, 
get rid of the discoloration of fruits. Next is sodium citrate. The addition of sodium citrate to a food containing citric acid will create a buffer solution, right. So, uh, citric acid is a weak acid and if we add sodium citrate to it, they both uh, this is a salt of citric acid sodium citrate. So, they will create a buffer solution and the weak acid and its salt exist in equilibrium and they will act as buffer and they will uh, remove or they will uh, the uh, bacteria which are responsible for the spoilage of the food. Next we have calcium citrate and this is an important acidity regulator in carbonated drinks it is used. Next is potassium tartrate this is obtained from grapes during wine making process and it helps bread to rise consistently and it is used in wine and bread production. Right. And uh, next we have a dyeing industry, color strength of dyes, right. If uh, we want to dye something, right, a narrow pH range is to be maintained, right. If that pH range is not maintained, then the color will not affect the cloth, right. R the uh, impartability of different dye colors to the cloth will not take place uh, if uh, optimum pH is not maintained, right. And for this, we have examples of modium, so monosodium phosphate. It maintains a low pH for acidic dyeing of textile fibers, whereas disodium phosphate is useful within a mild alkali range to dye fabrics. Next is uh, the application of buffers in printing industries to ensure the ink maintained its normal properties incorrect pH may affect how the ink penetrate and dries on the paper altering the final result, right. So, the pH may affect the penetrating of the paper and finally, the print of the uh, paper which will get finally. So, in printing industries pH is also important to be maintained. In electro plating industries and some alloys can be plated if a typical pH is maintained and if that is controlled. If that is not controlled uh, in uh, the pla electro plating of uh, alloys cannot take place, right. So, these were uh, some of the applications of buffers. Next we have applications of buffers in glue manufacturing industries properties of some ingredients used in the manufacture of glue such as gelatin change significantly even within minute alterations in pH, right. So, uh, we have gelatin. So, uh, we also know that each pH has to be maintained, right. So, that uh, the manufacture of glue can take place and the pH is also maintained in some leather industries and na narrow pH control uh, range is maintained for tanning and for dyeing bath determine the texture and color of the finished product. So, these are some of the applications. So, in uh, this lecture we I have just given an introduction about so what is our pH right and what is a pH scale. So, pH was the negative log of hydrogen ion concentration right and uh, buffers are the solutions that help us to maintain that particular pH. So, these two uh, topics go hand in hand. So, if we are concentrating on pH, we also have to take care of buffer solutions because they help us to maintain the pH of the particular formulations. So, they help us to maintain the particular pH. pH is particularly a characteristics which is maintained by buffer solutions, right. And uh, for that uh, we discuss buffer action and the application of buffers in pharmacy and different industries, right. And uh, this was the initial uh, introduction in the forthcoming lectures, I will be taking care of the determination of pH, right. So, determination of pH can be uh, taken care of by two methods, one is electrometric methods and another one is conductometry methods, right. So, these two type of methods are used for the determination of 
pH and we will be uh, taking up these topics in our consequent lectures. And uh, next I like to just give uh, a brief introduction about the references that you can uh, follow or the textbooks that you can follow for this physical pharmacy. Right. So, uh, most of the things are discussed very beautifully in physical pharmacy by Alfred Martin third edition. So, uh, this topic is present in third edition and it is not uh, present in other subsequent editions of this book. Right. I have gone through the sixth edition of physical pharmacy by Alfred Martin also and in that book you do not find this topic at all. Right. So, this is present only in the third edition and it is also beautifully described in one of the textbook that is named as essential of physical pharmacy by Dr. C. V. S. Subramaniam. Right. You will also find this uh, topic in that particular book that is also a good book that can be referred by you people and you find that the syllabus is uh, quite simply explained there. Right. And uh, the physical pharmacy uh, textbook by Dr. S. P. Agrawal, it is also a simplified version of uh, these two textbooks. Right. And you find that it is uh, a very basic textbook to study the concepts. Right. So, you can follow these textbooks for this topic, right. And I will be uh, taking up uh, firstly the electrometric uh, determination of pH, right, in my next lecture. And in uh, following lecture, uh, from next lecture, I will be taking up the conductometric determination of pH, right. Thank you.